MedLab is an Australian biotechnology company that's developing therapeutics using its proprietary next generation delivery platform called NanoCell. And with NanoCell, the company has launched a, a, investigating a broad range of different treatments for different things, mental health, gut health, pain management, diabetes, allergies. And with me is CEO Sean Hall. So a uh, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, thank you. Uh, so let's start with the nano cell technology. Explain that because that seems to be one of your kind of your secret sauce. So to speak. Yeah, uh, it, and look, it really is the differentiator and it's pretty well core to everything that we do. We're taking nanoparticles in a safe way. We're improving medicines first by the solubility of medicines. And I'm going to explain this in a second. But we are then providing a mechanism that provides more therapeutic benefit better patient outcome. So let me try and explain. Most medicines we take, most medicines are prescribed. You ingest, right? Tablets, capsules. And from a patient point of view, great way to take a medicine. From an efficacy point of view, worst way to take a medicine, right? Because so much of it is lost. Here, the body has natural barriers we call first pass, and they degrade tablets and capsules to the tune of around 80, 90%. What if we can bypass that? What if I can provide you a spray that you just spray to the corner of your mouth, inside of the cheek. You get more medicine in, you get a reduced side effect profile, no choking hazard, so you can give it to, you know, grandma and, and Johnny and so forth, right? But we can now look at a function where less is more. And why I say that is if we look at, let's say, statins, Lipitor is a great example. Blockbuster, especially here in America, started at 20 milligram, and over time went up to 80 milligram, right? Mm -hmm. But when we look at statins by and by, 14% of that tablet is actually the statin. So we start to optimize medicines. So I can provide small format, around about 15 mils, usually comprises around about a month's dosage of certain types of medicines, but particularly in the analgesic, so pain, okay. and in the mental health category, that can be applied to what we medically call the buccal membrane, so interior of the cheek, it gets a vast amount of the medicine into your bloodstream in minutes. Okay, interesting. So it's just a more efficient way right. of delivering the medicine that somebody needs. You're not wasting a bunch of it. Maybe the person is not, you know, I don't want to say overdosing, but they're not getting more than what they need. So That's the right. side effects are reduced. Okay, very interesting. And you're based in Australia. So is this approved there? What's the regulatory process? Yeah, actually, it's quite similar to here. There is, there is a good crossover between what is FDA and what is our equivalent, TGA. So uh, a number of our medicines are still non-approved. They're still going through that development cycle. Now, in some cases when we talk analgesic medicines, and I won't get into, into detail about that, but that's FDA facing. That's charging to the US market, right? And it's still a few years away, right? We have other medicines that are primarily in the uh, Australian regulatory market, TGA. We have one that's, that's going up for early evaluation in Europe. We have a couple that have been approved in Australia, very simple, but the big ones, the ones that technically could change the company the ones that could reshape how we look at pain management or how we look at management of mental health, right? They're the ones that are now starting to come across to a more TGA, sorry, an FDA-centric point. Would it ever be available in the US or could you do? We hope that in two particular drugs, if our timelines are correct, we would be putting application in 2024. Okay, and then I saw that you're both doing pharmaceuticals as well as consumer mm. products as well. Explain what's in your pipeline and what are all the portfolio of treatments that you have? Yeah, so from the company point of view, we're very centralized, again, analgesic and, and mental health. We did do some consumer related products. They're all out in partnering markets. So in Australia, we have a, a firm that takes them to market for us, pays us royalties. We've just done something similar in the UK. We're working on a deal in Italy for the same type of thing at the moment. In time, we will probably look for a partner here to do it. Yeah. So we're hands off on, on the go-to-market strategy. That's not who we are, but we provide an asset, better partners take it to market. Our model is based on milestones, upfront payments, and long-term royalty. And just describe to me, 
like how is the medicine advancement and the industry now? Because it seems like there's so many kind of precision medicine and there's all these like interesting things going on in this industry. Where do you see the future? So as a core topic, precision medicine is coming back into vogue from the medical community. And I'm certainly part of it. Last year, I think I presented at three conferences on it. But precision medicine still has a long way to go. And precision medicine from a doctor's point of view to a patient is one thing from a biotech slash pharma response to drug therapy is completely different. You know, if I take us back two years, globally, we had an event we weren't ready for. Okay. Are you talking about the pandemic? <laughs> the outcome to that, yeah, that's right. The outcome to that was we had no medicine fit for purpose. Okay. Thank you very much, Sean, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Thank you.